Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review we'll be going over the brand new ASUS Republic of Gamers Zephyrus. Now there are many different versions of this so the full model number is going to be SGX502GW-XB76. That'll be of course in the video title and down in the video description. So the Zephyrus line is going to be a powerful gaming machine that's focused on being light and thin. The particular model that we're going over today, one of their grand features here is we have a full featured NVIDIA RTX 2070, not the Max-Q edition, and we have a absolutely insane 240 hertz, three millisecond refresh rate screen for those who need the best for gaming. So as with all of our full length featured reviews, we'll start with our unboxing so you can see what comes in the box and what you should expect if you order one for yourself. So as you can see, the first thing we retrieved out of the box is going to be our power adapter. We have a small connector that's going to go into our laptop. The other side is universal where you're going to plug in your power cable for your particular region. And a close up of the specs shows that we have 19.5 volts, 11.8 amps, which equals a 230 watt power supply. Now with that out of the way, we have a small box here, which has our laptop. And of course you can see the bottom and the top of that inner box was protected with that foam padding. So that way it doesn't get crushed or bounced around. So you have to like the simplicity here that we have the black box with the ROG logo on it. So not a whole lot of crazy showy stuff. And this is going to keep everything really well protected during shipping. So with a little bit of encouragement, we got that plastic off and we got the fancy inner box. You can see it opens up kind of unusually and our laptop will just slide right out of there. So a first look. The ROG Zephyrus is a full-blown 15.6 inch laptop, but due to the ultra-thin bezels on the screen, the overall size is closer to more of a traditional 14 inch laptop. And our other thing hidden away here in this inner box is going to be a little pamphlet holder that has all the driver information, warranty information, the stuff you're probably never going to look at. And so that's everything from the inner box and everything from the outer box. So it's time to go ahead and unwrap our laptop. So while we work on getting that last cellophane coating off here to unravel the laptop and show it off, let's talk about some of the specs. First of all, the screen, while we mentioned it has a 240 hertz refresh rate and a three millisecond response time, Resolution on that is going to be 1920 by 1080p. It is a TN panel, but it has IPS level colors and contrast. We have our ninth generation Intel i7-9750H, which is a six core CPU. Again, the full blown NVIDIA RTX 2070, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So lots of great hardware specs. And of course, you'll see how that performs when we get into the benchmark section. So here we go, our laptop now unveiled for the first time. You can see how compact that is. It definitely looks like a 14 inch laptop with how thin those bezels are on the screen. So overall, a fairly portable package. So let's talk about the package presentation. Here we are with everything powered up for the first time. You get a glance at that screen and the bezels around the screen. Now again, this is definitely targeted for gamers TN panels are usually your higher performance panels, but not as great on the colors as IPS. Things are changing these days though, and these TN panels tend to have much better colors than the ones in the old days. Now for promo material, they have down here in the bottom left, some badges to show off some of the name brand features. So we have, of course, Nvidia and the G-Sync technology, that refresh rate that we've already talked about a couple of times, and our audio system is being advertised down below that, you're going to see the amazing keyboard. So it's a low profile chiclet style keyboard, LED backlit, RGB. Every single key has its own independent LED. So you can change the colors on individual keys and not just zones. 
So of course that means you can set up really cool customizations and even have per game customizations so you can highlight the keys that you use in their own colors. So let's talk about the finish and the body of the laptop. It's made out of a magnesium alloy and that's there to help reduce the weight of the laptop and make this one of those thin and light gaming laptops that we're really familiar with now. It is scratch resistant and fingerprint resistant because of that nice matte finish. So that's a pretty good way to go. So moving right along with our product tour, let's take a look at our interfaces and connectivity around the perimeter of the laptop. Starting on the right hand side, you have the most important USB 3.1 generation two type C display port connection. That's both input and output, followed by two USB 3.1 generation one type A ports and in the back, your Kensington lock port. There in between, you see the slits cut into the frame and that's just for ventilation with the cooling system. As we move around to the back of the laptop, there's no connectivity here. We do have a little LED and our major exhaust vents that are cut in for the airflow that keeps the entire system cool. Now moving over to the left hand side, we see more slits. That's our other intake. The power, where our power will go plug in to charge and run off of mains, RJ45, HDMI, another USB 3 port, and two 3.5 millimeter audio connections, one for your microphone in and one for your headphone output. Overall, we have a fairly generous array of connectivity here, especially for how thin this laptop is, including the full size RJ45 connectivity, which is nice to see. All right, time for our last modeling shots before we move into our nitty gritty benchmark section. So it's time for us to move into our benchmarks section. And that doesn't just mean performance stuff. That means size and weight because that is often very important to people. Here we have coins for scale and you can see that both the front and the back of the laptop do not even stand taller than a quarter. So that puts you close to three quarters of an inch. It's a fairly flat profile, not a wedged shape. So the front and the back are about the same. There's also one more really important neat trick that Zephyrus has up its sleeve. The traditional wedged shaped laptop is made that way for a reason. It makes it easier to type. It's more ergonomic and the flat, thin laptops don't have that advantage. You can see the Zephyrus as you lift the lid actually puts down the feet that will raise up the back of the laptop, making it easier to type on. And it has those cool underbody LEDs. So for the other half of the size and weight equation, here are your weight figures. The laptop itself is at four pounds and eight ounces. And if you decide to throw in your power adapter as well, you're at a total of six pounds and three ounces. So that's a super light laptop. And even with a full kit, you're not even close to seven pounds. So let's now move forward in the review and take a look at the device manager so we can see our hardware before we move into the performance benchmarks. So we do have the integrated graphics from Intel and of course the full blown graphics from Nvidia. That's the RTX 2070. Here for the CPU compute, we have the Intel i7-9750H. And then we have all the other miscellaneous things you know, like our USB controllers and such. Not too important right now. Here's the monitor panel in case you want to Google that and look for more details. And of course, like we mentioned earlier, that's 1920 by 1080 p a 240 hertz refresh rate. And what is not listed there is the three millisecond advertised response times. So it is vitally important for us to get some baseline numbers here before we move into our performance benchmark testing. So you can see the baseline figures for the CPU temperatures are about 50 degrees Celsius on our highest core. And we're just doing some regular YouTube video stuff right now. So we are putting a moderate load on here, but not very much. And down below where we get to the GPU temperatures, you can see currently that's at 47 degrees Celsius. Now the other baseline that we want to capture right now is going to be the sound levels. So here you can see with the sound meter, 
We're under 26 decibels near the loudest part of the system with our monitor right next to it. Now those sound figures might not mean a whole lot just from the numbers alone, but if you check out other reviews of similar units, it makes it easy for you to see which one is quieter or louder. And our very last baseline is going to be our temperature baseline. So we have an infrared camera here that will tell us all the temperatures of the unit. So we can visualize those and get some number readings. What we're looking for here is to make sure the heat is coming out of the system and not building up in anywhere that your hands are going to touch because that makes for an uncomfortable experience and some sweaty palms. So here we can see the hand area is nice and cool. The keyboard area does show some higher temperatures, which is usually a good sign that shows that heat does escape out of the keyboard and that helps with ventilation. And these here should read to be the hottest spots because this is where all the hot area is coming out of the system to cool everything down. The higher the number here, the better because that means the heat is leaving the system. So it's time to kick off the benchmarks and we'll see what kind of scores we get. Up first, we're gonna have 3D Mark running. And of course, while that's running, we can go start taking some of our other readings. You can see that the fans have spooled up significantly. We're now about 68 to 72 decibels. And this is, of course, a worst case scenario with the meter right next to the fans while we're running a performance benchmark. And the next baseline to go back and retest is going to be our temperatures. We don't see very much of a raise in temperatures here right now. Now over time things could slowly build up a little bit more, but it's a good sign that the system is actually taking care of most of the heat. Now the best readings are going to be after the benchmarks are done and we'll go check our internal temperatures again that we used the uh, sensors to read and we'll see how much of those have gone up. Now you do see here that the jets across the table are, are showing through the infrared camera because that heat is really getting blown out of the system and that's a good sign. And it looks cool. So we're now done with our benchmark and we can check in with our scores. A final score is 17,073, which is really good. Our temperatures on the CPU, also really good. 86 degrees Celsius, we did not get into the 90s, which is really nice to see. Now the video card, even better, only 72 degrees Celsius. So for a thin and light gaming laptop where we often see higher temperatures, especially with those heavy core CPUs, this laptop did great. All right, so next up on our benchmarks is Cinebench R15. So we'll let this run through and we'll get a score for our CPU in OpenGL. And we're finishing up here shortly. And the number one thing that we're looking for is going to be the OpenGL frames per second score. So here we can see that checked in at 95.65 frames per second, which is a great score. Down below we have some relative rankings that we can look at and see how we did. So of course you can use these benchmark scores to help compare and contrast against other systems and that'll help you finalize which one's going to have the right performance for you. Now just a short relative test, here is going to be our speaker systems and the capacity of the volume.
All right, now it's time for us to move into our final part of the review. All of the longtime viewers know exactly what this means when we see the bottom of our laptop. It's time for our disassembly. So disassembling the Zephyrus is going to require lots of small screws and they are different sizes. So here is what we had to remove. You can see that there are definitely different sizes here. So if you ever take the laptop apart, be very careful to keep track of where everything went. Now there is the one door here, which would be the user accessible area which really doesn't give you access to much other than seeing the cooling fans and the hinges. So if you're going to blow out the fans to keep them clean, that's about the only reason to take that door off. Getting into the rest of the system, you can see there's several more screws that we had to take out, and that's going to let us take the entire bottom piece of the laptop off. Now, for most people, there's really not a good reason to disassemble the system to get to these areas because it's not like there's a lot to upgrade because the system is already really well equipped from the factory being that it's a high-end gaming laptop. However, you do see that we have a system RAM slot that we could add another stick of RAM to and bring it from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. And we are also going to continue to take apart the system a lot further. You can just see the, the minefield of screws everywhere. And that's going to let us get further into the system. So we have our internal battery to remove and a close up for specs. So over here we have an M2 SSD. This is a really nice solid one terabyte SSD. And we have all the cooling pipes here. So we've already unscrewed most of everything. So we just kind of kind of move things out of the way. And that's going to reveal the CPU and the GPU. And you can see these are on board, so they're not dedicated in an MXM slot, so that is not a removable GPU. So we're not going to flip the motherboard over, but just know that the 16 gigabytes of RAM the system comes with is located on the other side of the motherboard. And it is soldered to the motherboard, so it is not removable. So there's definitely no reason to go after it because it just wouldn't be worth it. So now here we are with our disassembly completed and that actually brings us to the end of our review. So for our closing remarks, we just want to say we hope you enjoyed our video today and you found it educational and entertaining. If you had any questions about this particular laptop, you were just curious about it. Hopefully the video was able to get that settled for you and your questions are answered and your curiosities are now piqued. The next step from here is to go down into the video description and find the product page link and there you can go find the current pricing and availability and see the full system specs. If you had any questions the video didn't answer, feel free to go down in the video comment section and ask down there. We'll answer that question for you and everybody else at the same time. Or if you need some personalized one-on-one -on -one help, then feel free to contact us by phone or email. So once again, we just want to remind everybody that this was Gentech PC and we'll see you next time.